Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Shabbat morning. Actually, it's afternoon. I apologize. <laughs> today is the 4th of March, 2023. And the parashah for today is called Titzabe, which means you shall command. The Torah portion comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 27, verse 20, through chapter 30, verse 10. Prof uh, the prophetic or the Haftarah portion comes from 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verses 2 through 34. And there can also be read Ezekiel, chapter 43, verses 10 through 27. And for the Brit Chadasha, <clears throat> or the New Covenant, we can read from Matthew, chapter 5, verse 13 through 20. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through chapter 5, verse 43, and Mark chapter 6, verses 14 through 29. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 20, and 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 25. And then we also have the Maftir, which is Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 17 through 19. My name is Rabbi Clint Harel Fry, and uh, before we start, <clears throat> I would just like to open this time in prayer. Abba Father, thank you again for the wonderful privilege it is to be in your presence and study your word and to know more about you. I ask you simply, as always, that you will speak to me, teach me, teach us, for all who listen or watch. Give us open hearts, eyes to see and ears to hear. And I ask that which comes out of my mouth be from your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, and not from me. All for your glory. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. So today we're going to be talking about a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, first, we're going to be talking about Kohens or priests in Hebrew and basically priests of a different kind. So what can we say are the difference between the priests that we find in the Bible in the Tanakh or the Old Testament, as many people call it, and the Christian priests? Well, there's more than you might think, and they aren't even related. So not long after uh, separating from Judaism, I don't know why they did, at least not at the point that they did anyway. Uh, let's say Christianity, if you like to call it that. I don't like to call it that. Uh, I would just say the body of Yeshua developed the clerical class responsible for shepherding the people, <clears throat> officiating services, conducting sacraments, etc., etc. So the clerical class of uh, presbyters, what they call it, came to be called priests. However, the various priesthoods of what we could call Christendom are different from the priesthood of the Bible, the original priesthood. The biblical priesthood is unrelated to the priesthood that is operating within Christianity today. The Hebrew word for priest is Kohen. So if you're Jewish and you have like a last name like Kohen or Kohen with a K and a W or Kahan or Kohen, K-O-E-N, et cetera, et cetera, most likely you'd be a descendant of Moses' brother Aaron and his sons <laughs> because they had the last name of Kohen. Your ancestors served as priests in the tabernacle and in the temple in Jerusalem. So it says in Exodus 28, 1, then bring near to yourself Aaron and your brother and his sons, or Aaron, your brother, and his sons with them from among the sons of Israel to minister as priests to me, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Itamar, Aaron's sons. In the Bible, only the descendants of Aaron could actually be the priests, even though there were many Levites who served in the temple to help out carry out daily duties. They were the only priests. They were born into this position. Priests did not undertake vows of celibacy, which is totally not biblical. The Bible says simply to have only one wife. Okay, so thinking about the celibacy, if it's one thing of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit puts it on your heart to do so, but <clears throat> imposing it on a person like they say the Catholic Church does, not a good idea because then we see what happens, right? Lots of temptation and other things and sin. So 
Uh, instead, priesthood was passed on through the families. It was a calling to that family. The descendants of Aaron uh, have attempted to preserve their family lineage, like I said, throughout the generations. The priests are a special family group within the Jewish people. <laughs> and most Jewish communities have several families that belong to the priesthood, at least one. So priests and rabbis also are not the same. Rabbi, someone who's gone to rabbinical school or yeshiva in Hebrew, received rabbinic ordination by an official ordaining body within Judaism. Any Jew can become a rabbi. The single Jewish community may have, often have more than one rabbi. Um, usually they have one, just one, but sometimes, uh, sometimes they get a two or three. So to this price, to this day, the priests retain their, their priestly status in Judaism. Descendants of Aaron are still subject to special restrictions and laws of Torah that apply to the biblical priesthood, except they don't have tunics, at least not yet. So moreover, the priests enjoy special privileges in the synagogue uh, <clears throat> and serve in certain ritual functions. For example, if a priest is present on the Sabbath, he is given the first opportunity to read from the Torah scroll. At the end of the Sabbath prayers, he is called to offer the priestly blessing or the uh, ironic blessing over the congregation. Priests are also responsible for ritual functions in the community, like the redemption of firstborn sons. So despite these modern functions, the Aaronic priesthood isn't what it used to be, obviously. In the days when the tabernacle or the temple stood, uh, the priesthood was a crucial component in the service of Hashem. They were responsible for worship services. They handled the sacrifices and took care of the altar fires. There was a lot of stuff to do. And they lit the menorah, burned the sacred incense, baked the bread of the presence, and did all the service of the tabernacle. They carried out the divine service on behalf of the entire nation of Israel. Moreover, they were also responsible for teaching the people the Torah their biggest responsibility. The priesthood illustrates our relationship to Hashem. So like the common Israelite in the days of the tabernacle, we are unable to enter directly into the presence of Hashem. Uh, <clears throat> so instead we need a go-between, an interme in intermediary. So in the tabernacle and the temple, the intermediaries were called priests. <clears throat> These people facilitated in the relationship between Hashem and the people of Israel. So in a similar way, we disciples of Yeshua, or Jesus in English, regard our Savior as our intermediary with Hashem. It says so right in the Bible, right? He says he is our only intermediary, our only one who can intercede. He is the only way to the Father. So he is our go-between who acts as a priest for us in the heavenly temple. And however, the priesthood of our master is a spiritual priesthood and does not supplant the worldly, eternal priesthood promised to the sons of Aaron, at least up until maybe when Yeshua destroys the heavens and the earth and the new Jerusalem comes down and the, heaven, uh, the new heavens and earth. Uh, it says that Yeshua himself will be the temple. So we'll see what happens at that time. But before then, that's how it's going to be. The priests have been out of work since the destruction of the temple, but they could be called back to work <clears throat> once the third temple gets rebuilt, which they are preparing for now. The priests today, like I said, they're waiting for the rebuilding of the holy temple in Jerusalem when they will be called for duty. They are now practicing sacrifices. They are practicing all the rituals. They're actually doing that. Uh, so <clears throat> just a matter of months before things really start happening. One day, they will be literally doing their job. <clears throat> now, we know as believers in Yeshua, there is no need for sacrifices because Yeshua did take care of that once and for all. But also, like I said, once Yeshua comes back, I believe there will be two types of sacrifices or offerings, we could say. The thanks offering and the peace offering. That's a little different than sacrifices being made for sin or anything else. According to the prophet Jeremiah, Hashem's promise to restore the Aaronic priesthood is inseparably linked with his promise to send the Davidic messiah and Messiah and 
It says, thus says Adonai, if you can break my covenant for the day and my covenant for the night, so that day and night will not be at their appointed time, then my covenant may also be broken with David, my servant, so that he will not have a son to reign on his throne and with the, the, Levit the Levitical priests, my ministers. This is found in Jeremiah 33, verses 20 and 21. The second and last thing I would like to talk about <clears throat> is the Messiah priest. Mentioned that before. In the name and authority of his father, Yeshua acts as a high priest on our behalf. I am so thankful for that. <laughs> Removing our iniquity, our sins from before Hashem. Without Yeshua, there would be no removal of sin. We would all be guilty. We would all be going to hell. And I tell you what, I would not, I'd rather not be born than have that. Can you imagine being born and not having a choice but to go to hell because we're all sinners? That would be horrible. So Aaron, the high priest, received the special anointing. The Torah says, then you shall take the anointing oil and pour it on his head and anoint him. In Exodus 29, 7. The Torah refers to the high priest as Hakohen, Hamashiach. That is the anointed priest, <clears throat> or to put it a different way, the Messiah priest. Messiah means the anointed one. In, in Hebrew, Moshiach, okay, means the anointed one. The Bible makes reference to three offices that received a symbolic anointing with oil. Priests, prophets, and kings. <clears throat> Yeshua functions in all three of these areas. He is the prophet, the priest, and the king. In his first coming, he ministered as a prophet. After his resurrection, he ascended to his priesthood of the order of Melchizedek. When he returns, in a few years, he will, return, he will rule from Jerusalem as king for a thousand years, and then from the new heavens and earth will rule as our temple. So a golden plate on the high priest's turban said, Holy to Adonai. The high priest therefore carried the name of Hashem or Adonai and acted in the authority of that name. The words holy to Adonai indicated Hashem's exclusive proprietorship over him. As the Messiah entered into his spiritual role of priesthood after his resurrection, he received the name above every name. As scripture says in Philippians 2.9, for this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. So the sins of the children of Israel ritually and spiritually defiled the sanctuary in all of its furnishings. The high priest ministered before Hashem in the name and authority of Hashem, removing the iniquity of Israel from Hashem's presence within the sanctuary. Aaron and the high priest after him accomplished this through means of the daily sacrificial service, and the annual purification ceremonies of Yom Kippur. So in a similar way, Yeshua ministers on our behalf right now. In the name and authority of his Father, he intercedes on our behalf, removing our iniquity from before Hashem, not in the earthly sanctuary, but in the actual, real, heavenly sanctuary. This is the priesthood of Messiah. Priesthood is this, Messiah Yeshua is he who died, yes, rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Romans 8.34. So not only do we have Yeshua who intercedes for us, we also have the Ruach HaKodesh, which is the Holy Spirit, interceding for us continually. Therefore, he is also able to, able also to save forever those who draw near to Hashem, through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. And this is found in Hebrews 7.25. So does this mean that Yeshua has replaced the Aaronic priesthood? No. As the writer of the book of Hebrews says, like I said, now if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there are those who offer the gifts according to the Torah who serve a copy and shadow of the heavenly things. This is found in Hebrews 8, verses 4 and 5. So the Levitical ceremonies functioned as a copy and shadow of the service in the heavenly temple. This is pretty amazing to me. And I want to thank you for joining me today. That's all. <clears throat> May you have blessed Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom to all of you. As always, check out our links below. Contact link. 
uh, prayer requests, comments, uh, questions. We have our uh, our link for our, all of our free Messianic resources. And we also have a link for Mahkaseh Tikva, which is uh, Rabbit and Gabriela, my wife's website in English and Italian for those who need biblical counseling. Uh, counseling on biblical base. She is a licensed counselor. And last of all, um, we have a link for those who would like to make a donation and help support our ministry simply to exist and to carry on what we're trying to do. And that is to bring the message of salvation in Yeshua to our people. Shabbat shalom to all of you. Thank you very much.